let's take a look at some of the advanced rendering options found within Cubase Pro 8. Every system will eventually run out of power. People are using more tracks, more virtual instruments, larger sample libraries, more effects, and again, they're just doing everything in the computer and eventually the processor needs help. There have been workarounds in the past where people will render files, set up locators, export, re-import, freezing tracks, but their workflow is always a little left to be desired. So the advanced rendering fixes a lot of this. So if I wanted to render this virtual instrument of a string quartet, I could select a part, right click, go to render in place, and choose render. And what this will do, I don't have to set locators, I don't have to do any routing, it's going to automatically just take that part, create an audio track directly underneath the part, and even carry the color over and mute the event there. Those are the settings that I have. Now if I wanted to do this for multiple events, I could just come here, I could do it for tracks, for audio tracks, virtual instrument tracks, and if I wanted to change some of the settings, I could come right here, go to render in place, and go to my render setup. And this is pretty obvious uh, choices here, so it's very simple and easy to do. I could render these as separate events, as block events, or as one single event. I could in have no effects. I could include my channel settings for my insert effects, my channel EQ, and my channel strip. If I wanted to include my, I could choose the complete signal path if I wanted to include my send effects, or if I wanted to include the send effects and the master effects, I could choose that option. Uh, if I have multiple events selected, I can mix it down to one file. Uh, I could choose the naming of the file. We could add a tail size. So if we have a reverb delay that's going to hang on, we could do that in bars and beats or in seconds. I could choose to keep the source events unchanged or mute the source events. And if we go to our file settings, I could choose what bit resolution we want, whether 16, 24, or 32-bit float. At this point, we could just hit OK. And it's going to take these four separate events here. And now it's going to render those each of those events independently. And again, we see the color automatically carried over. It plays directly below, so it's not going to the very bottom of your project window. And we're just on the fourth event. So you can see again how easy, simple, fast, and effective that is. Now, one thing to be aware of is you can have some additional options if you have the channel selected versus the events. So if I have the channel selected here, say for my piano part, and I could now go to my render setup. At this point, we could say I just wanted to, we get some additional options here. So not only could we keep the source tracks unchanged or mute the source tracks, I could disable the source track, and that would allow you to uh, free up any uh, additional uh processing power that the plugin is taking like a piano or a large string library or sampler or you could actually just remove the source tracks entirely. Rendering isn't just for virtual instrument tracks and MIDI tracks. It could be used just as easily for audio tracks. So in this case I had a uh, a lot of vocal edits where I needed to take out a lot of breath so I was able just to kind of do all my edits instead of cutting having all these different edits here and cutting I just chose to render that event to one contiguous event here. So whether you wanted to free up audio processing or your virtual instruments, the new rendering in place makes a big difference in working how you want to and working with your existing workflow so that you can get your work done faster.